The News 18 Ipsos exit poll has projected a scenario for Maharashtra which I think was known to most people. The truth is that this first assembly election which is taking place post the 2019 Lok Sabha elections is only consolidating the belief that on Indian political horizon there is no other political leader with the kind of connect than Narendra Modi. Prime Minister Modi's direct dialogue, direct conversation with the people of India continues exactly in the same way where it started in 2014. Only difference is that it's only going up. The intensity is only going up. The exit poll done by News 18 and Ipsos is projecting just for the BJP around 141 seats in an assembly of 288. What is even better for the Shiv Sena? For the first time in the history of the Shiv Sena, it is being projected to win 102 seats. There was Aditya Thakre, the junior most member of the Thakre clan, becoming the first member of the Thakre Parivar to be contesting an election from Varli. This time around, between the two parties, it appears that there is virtually no space for the Congress and the NCP. The other important part to look out for is what happens to the opposition. Is it time for Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi, frankly, to quit politics? This kind of massive mandate being projected for the BJP and Shiv Sena combined not possible unless there is an outright annihilation, total rejection of the opposition. Look at the story of the opposition. Former chief ministers like Prithviraj Chavan, Ashok Chavan being projected to lose their seats in Maharashtra. On the other side, you have Aditya Thakre, first-timer, first-time contestant who's expected to win from Worli. There is a total of roughly 25 candidates who had switched sides from the Congress and NCP and joined either the BJP or the Shiv Sena. Even those candidates most likely to win according to the poll which has been done by Ipsos. For a state like Haryana which was ruled by the Congress for 10 long years, the News 18 Ipsos exit poll is predicting a total of guess what? 75 seats for Manohar Lal Khattar. The first non-Jat chief minister in the four decade long history of the state. The first non-Jat chief minister was expected, well, not to complete his tenure. Combination of Modi and Manohar Lal Khattar has, much like Maharashtra, created a scenario in Haryana where the BJP appears to be simply invincible. The Congress appears to be split in various factions. The fact that the BJP has run a consolidated campaign versus the Congress, which never appeared to be in the campaign, leads us to believe that this could well be an election of virtual decimation for the Congress. The biggest factor which emerges in Haryana elections is that the Indian National Lok Dal, which at one point of time used to be the ultimate custodian of Jat votes in Haryana, has virtually been reduced to nil. This exit poll shows that the conventional political axiom of Jats looking for a Jat leader may well be on the verge of being a change. Jats are now willing to bank upon a leader who is not a Jat. What else explains Manohar Lal Khattar, a Punjabi, a non-Jat, becoming the favourite of such a huge percentage of people from Haryana? The magnitude of the victory which has been predicted by the News 18 Ipsos exit poll does suggest that the Congress party may well remain in coma for a very long time. If Mission 75, which has been set up by the BJP, is indeed achieved, then that would really mean serious concerns for the Congress party in this state. It may also lead to a scenario, despite Bhupendra Singh Huda winning his own seat, that the Congress will be forced to invest in someone for the long run. If the Congress does not do that, the story of the BJP, which is based on hyper-nationalism, will only get stronger and stronger.